of the countries that participated in World War II in some way, shape or form, many just don't get the exposure that they need. In this now defined four parter series, we plan to introduce pretty much every country that so much as dipped their toes in World War II and provide you with simplified highlights of their involvement and what they were famous or infamous for. To reiterate, these are simplified pockets of information. We know that country specific political, social and cultural context will be missing, but this series isn't going for depth. We're aiming to provide a general view on how countries other than, but still including the heavyweights like Germany and Great Britain, participated in the war through snippets of information that we hope you'll enjoy. Anyways, let's get into part three. Starting with Africa and its surrounds, Madagascar was a French colony at the kickoff of World War II. Its native people, the Malagasy, bolstered the French army in the European theatre, and some 34,000 Malagasy conscripts were in France when it surrendered. Following France's surrender, Madagascar pledged allegiance to the Vichy government, and this was of course a great concern to the Allies, as if Madagascar fell into Axis hands, they could use it as a platform to attack the east coast of Africa and spread it into the Indian Ocean. Churchill responded with Operation Ironclad, seizing the Madagascan port of Diego Suarez and inspiring the Battle for Madagascar, a fight which would ultimately win him the island. Leaving their built-on cabinets behind, South African soldiers helped the Brits free Madagascar from Vichy French. But this wasn't their only contribution to the Allies. South Africans fought on both their own continent, against Erwin, the Desert Fox Rommel, and in Europe. While about 135,000 members of their white population were involved in direct combat, South Africa's black and coloured populations were not enlisted to fight due to its existing racial climate. Instead, their manpower was applied to pioneering and labouring efforts. Some 30,000 men from the Bechuanaland Protectorates, now Botswana, and Basutoland, now Lesotho, also joined ranks with the British. A British colony, Northern Rhodesia participated in Burma, East Africa and you guessed it, Madagascar, while also supplying copper to the British armed forces. Southern Rhodesia leapt into war following the invasion of Poland and by the end, over 25,000 Southern Rhodesians had fought for the Allies on both their home continent and overseas. But their commitment of flesh to head on warfare isn't what they're most famed for. Their greatest gift was the Rhodesian Air Training Group, a program in which allied pilots from around the world learned to fly and in which navigators, bomb aimers and air gunners learned to wield the tools of their calamitous trade. Another source of British colonial troops, over 100,000 Tanganyikans joined the Allies and the war. At the start of the war, some of the German citizens living in this territory tried to flee it, but they were caught by the dude who wrote Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, Roald Dahl. Damn history, you keep on surprising me. Tanganyikan food exports, particularly under the British government's Tanganyikan wheat scheme, were also vital to the Allies, and some of the Poles who fled Europe actually ended up in Tanganyikan refugee camps as well. Even after Belgium's surrender and under its exiled government, the colony of Belgian Congo continued to fortify the Allies by supplying them with raw materials such as uranium, gold and rubber. The colony also contributed to the Force Publique, a racially segmented military force some 40,000 strong to the East Africa campaign, and a medical unit in the Force Publique, the 10th Belgian Congo Casualty Clearing Station, which was comprised mostly of native Congolese, tended to the Allies both on the African continent and most notably in Burma. Comprised of eight French colonial territories, French West Africa was the stage for the Battle of Dakar, an altercation between the Allies and Vichy French in which the Allies lost, though no other large-scale battles erupted there. Among other African colonial forces in the Battle of France, the presence of Senegalese tireurs outraged the Nazis, who saw them as racially inferior opponents and massacred them in droves. 
If you were wondering, the term tirailleur is a French word from the days of Napoleon and essentially translates to skirmishes. Occupied by the Vichys, French Somaliland was the stage of only minor strife in World War II. Taking Italian East Africa in 1941, the Allies had pretty much surrounded French Somaliland. So, rather than death, they loosed upon it a barrage of propaganda, intent on encouraging the colony to switch its allegiance to the Free French. Near the end of 1942, after two French battalions had heeded the propaganda and crossed into British Somaliland, the Allies marched on in and took the capital. French Equatorial Africa was a federation of four colony territories including French Gabon, French Congo, Ubangi Shari and French Chad. Of these, only Gabon declared allegiance to the Vichy government when the French surrendered. This ended up proving a poor move by Governor Georges Pierre Masson of Gabon, who killed himself after the Free French beat the territory to surrender in the Battle of Gabon. Another British colony, Kenya jumped into the war when the Brits declared it on the Nazis. While there were a few tussles in the country itself, Kenya's greatest contribution to Allied war efforts was the Kenyans. Their soldiers represented some 30% of the King's African Rifles, a multi-battalion British colonial regiment, and served in Madagascar, Burma, and the East African Campaign under the command of British officers. Kenya was also a vital source of two things the British Empire couldn't possibly have endured without, tobacco and tea. In 1936, Mussolini proclaimed Italian Somaliland, Italian Eritrea and the Ethiopian Empire, Italian East Africa. And when the chrome-domed fascists declared war on Britain and France, the Allies deemed the Italian colony a threat to their own colonies in the Horn of Africa, to British-occupied Egypt and to British supply routes like the Suez Canal. The Free French, the Belgian Force Publique, and Imperial Ethiopian Irregulars aided the British and their colonies in a campaign into Italian East Africa known as the East African Campaign, which eventuated in the first strategic victory for the Allies in the war. Yet another British colony, Nigeria fought for the Allies, boosting the Brits by some 45,000 soldiers throughout the war. Despite their success, specifically in Burma and India, no Nigerian ever got to be an officer. No actual fighting went down in the Gold Coast, now Ghana, though this British colony, which was known for its production of gold and cocoa, aided the Allies by contributing over 65,000 men, contributing resources, and by housing aircraft. Talk about fashionably late, Liberia entered the war at the start of 1944 officially. Before that, it had been participating for two years under an agreement with the US. Like the Belgian Congo, Liberia was a steady source of rubber for the Allies. At the onset of World War II, the Indian Ocean Island nation of Mauritius was British Mauritius. Many Mauritians fought for the British in Africa and the Middle East, even though the island itself was never under any direct threat. It was, however, an important asset to the Royal Navy, who used it as a base when stalking Axis subs. And no, not those pesky Axis subscribers, we mean submarines. Before the fall of France, Moroccan soldiers fought for the French as part of the Armée d'Afrique, the Army of Africa, and after the fall, up until the North African Campaign, Morocco was under Vichy control. During this time, many native Moroccans fought for the French and for the Axis, and the Jewish population, which was already in poverty, suffered even more. After Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of French North Africa via landing at Casablanca, Vichy allegiance in Morocco shifted in favor of the Allies, as it did with the native Moroccan soldiers, the Goumi, who continued to fight on behalf of the French, though from the opposite end. Tunisian soldiers, like the Moroccan Goumi, were also a part of the Army of Africa. As for Tunisia itself, a series of battles known together as the Battle of Tunisia or the Tunisian Campaign took place there, resulting after an initial defeat in a clean victory for the Allies, who, impairing their supply lines and with superior numbers, overwhelmed the Axis forces and bent them to surrender, taking 230,000 as prisoners of war. Algerians formed another portion of the Army of Africa and fought in France before its fall in 1940. Under control of the Vichys and the Nazis, Algeria was another country liberated by the Allies in Operation Torch, and afterwards, the Algerians fought for the French army in the Italian campaign and into southern France. 
Many of Muslim natives in Italian Libya joined the Italian army in World War II under the command of Italian officers. Libya was a major setting in the North Africa campaign. In fact, the Italians launched their attack on Egypt from there. While the British occupied Egypt prior to and during World War II, it was not a British colony. During the war, Egypt's army grew to over 100,000 and the British remained in Egypt offering the Egyptians military equipment and expertise, and of course, defending the Suez Canal. The British, with the help of other Commonwealth allies, fought off both an Italian and German invasion of Egypt on separate occasions, and this particular victory over the latter, by the railway halt of El Amain, was the first major victory for Great Britain over the Germans in the war. A British-led Sudanese native military force called the Sudan Defense Force guarded the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, now Sudan and South Sudan against Italian East Africa and were involved in the East Africa and Western Desert campaigns. Rwanda Arundi was a Belgian controlled twin territory until the end of World War II, after which it became a United Nations Trust territory. So to conclude our little section on Africa, it was a pretty bad time for most of the African natives and European colonies. Not only were they killed fighting for foreign officers in a war many of them didn't want or really understand, but they were also starved producing and providing the resources to sustain it. Anyways, moving on to some of the countries in and around the Middle East. Taking a dip in the Arabian Sea, an Italian cruiser was sunk off the coast of the Maldives' southernmost atoll, Adu Atoll, and that was about as much action as the country saw. Moving on to the Middle East now, Saudi Arabia was neutral right up to 1945, when it declared war on Germany and Japan. Throughout the war, Saudi also sold oil to Britain and the US, and it was ultimately these two allied countries who convinced Saudi to pick a side and join the war, into which there was no need for it to send its troops. Prior to the war, the northern portion of Yemen had an alliance with Italy, its leader having actually held meetings with Mussolini, though during it, the country remained neutral. Oman declared war on Germany toward the end of 1949. Recognizing the country's geographical value, Britain built an airfield and other facilities there, and the former became a Royal Air Force station onwards of 1943. Transjordan, a British mandate territory which is now just Jordan, fought under British command in a 1600-man army called the Arab Legion. So guys, that was part three of our mega series where we try and discuss almost every single country throughout the world that participated in World War II. So let me know what you're thinking of this series. Uh, part four is on its way and, we've, and we're pretty much going to be discussing most of Europe. But for now, I want to leave you guys with a question. So in 1940, the Nazis started planning a mass deportation of Jews to Madagascar. But this plan was ultimately impeded by the British naval blockade and the loss of the Battle of Britain. So had this logistically ridiculous Madagascar plan actually gone through, i.e. the Holocaust occurred in a different way, or maybe not at all, how might the war have been different and how would it have affected Europe, if at all? Let me know in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, if you are enjoying the channel, please make sure you check out all those links in the description below. If you want to join our Discord and talk with other like-minded history fans, click that link. If you want to help support the channel more than you already are by watching this video, please do help support me on the Patreon. I want to give a big thank you to all of my current patrons. You guys really help us out so much and we've been increasing quality and hopefully in the future quantity again with your guys' donations. We are coming out with a new clothing store based around history, World War II, and it's got a bunch of cool designs there that I'll be giving away free to some of my patrons. And that store link should be up pretty soon, if not in this video. I'm not sure because I'm recording this in the past. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.